videos that caught my eye was um you said uh it was like about moaz math okay right and it was like um i think it was talking about like the different tiers of reality we should be living in like based on hopium it was, it was like yeah. Yeah. it was like tier one is like here are realistic things like it might go up from 50 to like you know at a post squeeze or post split 50 dollars all the way to like you know 700 or something like that and i was like that's like a realistic good scenario that can definitely happen there's like a best case scenario and like a oh i can't believe this happened scenario <laughs> yeah that, i can it, uh you want me to just pull it up i got yeah, it open pull right it here. up pull it up yeah here we go the math so everyone wants to see the math what's up everybody yeah, so, in the chat everybody in the chat we're hanging out with richard newton right now which god you you sound so smart like your name just sounds smart dude <laughs> Well, that's, that's good. Here, can you see this? I can't. You can't see that? Let me see. Um, see oh, here we go. see those locks. There it is. There we go. All right, cool. So, yeah. Um, what I did was basically, and people pointed out right away, like, there it is. in a, like a squeeze type of scenario, right, the uh, individual share prices that trade could spike like way higher though, right? So I'm basically just looking at market cap. Like what's a conceivable market cap and then dividing by the 304 million shares outstanding yeah. to see like what the average share price would represent, right? So there's a lot of different ways you could go into more detail on this, but, um, and actually our shares outstanding are a little bit higher right now, but like a good turnaround, right? These tiers that you talked about, tier one, two, and three, if you're looking at something like Chewy or eBay and kind of with the marketplace, it's kind of like an eBay scenario already. You're looking at a uh, market cap of like $25 million, which would be a share price. Let me zoom out here a second. Of like $82 a share over there, right? So what are we at today? Like 27. So like a three or four X. Mm -hmm. And then if we go as big as like PayPal, which is like payment processing, right? Which also NFTs and crypto, you know, could perceivably be like all this is totally reasonable with the tech angle you're looking at like $300 a share. Mm -hmm. So this would be like steady growth, right? God, this like is such these. a, Richard, this is such a good chart because it's like, it's exactly what I'm thinking because it's like, you know, all the things in dark, the darker blue are the long, long-term, you know, yeah. investment reasons you would invest in GameStop. All of these top number one, two, and three, it's like, oh yeah, do we want the Moaz? Yes, but these one, two, three reasons are like my absolute fallback plans because I still yeah. see a good turnaround. I see strong turnaround and an NFT dividend or NFT dominance. I see like the, the total like dominance of GameStop going forward. Yeah, for sure. And, and like to me, it's like people that bought in early on Tesla or Apple or any of these other big plays that happen, right? These are all like reasonable to me, I feel like, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I feel like with Tesla, there was a short, uh, short squeeze that happened in slow mo kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, so you could have something like Facebook's market cap or Tesla's market cap, which these are lower now because of the. Uh, I, when I put this together, I think the stock market was a little bit higher. But um, this is this would be the max market cap. I think Apple's market cap used to be somewhere around two point four trillion. So that's what I base that on. And these would be your share prices today. This is post split, right? So going from like $27 a share up to something like this. And the rationale for this is you've got these other elements going on simultaneously, but also there's all these shorts that have to slowly exit their positions, right? And just causes more and more demand for the stock because every short seller is a future buyer, right? So it just goes up and it seems unreasonable, right? Like Tesla's valuation seems unreasonable. But when you think about how many people shorted it back when it was cheap, those are the ones pushing the price up with their, with their buy-ins. So all these would be slower up to something really big like Volkswagen. And then I mean, these become like super big, right? Like Yeah, I think the big. Volkswagen one's definitely doable because I mean, I think if we just if, if an, a DRS 2.0 could ever happen, we're getting there. Like with the 7 7 like they were 74 <laughs> crazy. I think 74.1% DRS theoretically. I don't know if that's the actual number, but they were somewhere around like 74% DRS because of like the buy-in or buyout or whatever. So when that happened, that's when it like immediately triggered because it was like overnight. So for us, it's like, we're slowly getting towards that number. So my, my question is like, we're not necessarily catching shorts off guard. Like there's a, a there's a random company buying another company and then all of a sudden it's 74%, uh, you know, registered shares. 
You know, it's like they kind of have yeah. some time to prepare. So it's like, is it going to be a slow squeeze or is it going to be like they don't have enough Tier collateral to actually do this? Are gonna be flying high My understanding, too, is with Volkswagen that uh, they actually knew like there it wasn't a, like that final push where they bought all the options and, and had like a bigger stake than people expected. Um, threw them off guard a bit, but there was a lot of telegraphing ahead of time that Porsche was buying a big share of Volkswagen. So ah, shorts were... Bad. Shorts just don't want to exit, right? It's like, um, who said it? Mark Cuban. They never want to close out their position, right? So until the last second, then they all of a sudden are like, oh, we better do this. And that's kind of what happened with Volkswagen, I would say. So these other ones would be, because I feel like what happened with Volkswagen was was huge, but what's, what's happened with GameStop is probably way more egregious. Yeah, these I are agree. These are possible, and even to a degree, it could spike even higher. I mean, conceivably, it's hard to say what the highest share price will be because even um, on January 28th, I think there were trades that went through that were over $483. So could people get a million dollars a share? Like, it's, I don't know, it's just really hard to say. Um, but mm. this just gives people a sense for the, the market cap, what the event would kind of be, and then, um, you know, what the price per share would look like, which is strict division, but there's going to be variance, right? Like huge variability, as we've seen, like on these big days where the price gaps up ultra hard, mm -hmm. you see crazy, crazy share prices sneak through. So I don't know. We'll see. Dude, I mean, if there's ever a glitch, I want to hit one. I want to have that. I want to have $420 million glitch uh sell order right. that's what i want <laughs> right. i want to be the guy that wins i want to be the guy that sells for the peak someone's going to sell for the peak and i want to be the guy that does it you know that's yeah. got that's my mission in life i'm going to try to stop sharing my screen without blowing up the uh stream here oh here we go <laughs> all right there <laughs> okay good dude okay so you know what's crazy is like when you're talking about that you're talking about how um the volkswagen situation you probably you think it's more egregious now with with gamestop I it's think gotta be. I think that like there are several charts, okay? There are several charts that say like basically like, almost like the ramp up in like how much debt we have to me is like um or like how much obligation there is. It, it it's like a, a a direct correlation with when high frequency trading came on board where like if you read the read Flash Boys and I think it's like around 2008. It was like way sooner than I remember. Like it was like not that long ago. So it's like Oh, since then, they've been robbing everyone and falsifying the economy to this huge point. So like we had a financial crisis, but they didn't really care about that. You know, like get bailed out. They had these high frequency trading uh, like pipelines built where they get like the perfect amount, like millisecond faster on trades. And it's it's already determined like stockbrokers aren't even what you think of. Like they're on the trading floor trading. They are actually just like nothing people behind the scenes doing nothing <laughs> like it's really all the algorithm making the company money and whoever has the fastest connection to that data line wins and since then since like that period of time to now they've just been robbing everyone so the debt like obligations are going through the roof and they'll just keep shorting and shorting and shorting and shorting and increase this obligation they think they never have to pay back so if there ever was a pendulum if it ever like 2008 it swung like this low it's like now they've pulled it back to here and it's like about to like be let go. And it's like just going to swing back the other way into the freaking stratosphere. That's what I think. Well, another good, and I'll say like the community has been amazing at like digging this kind of stuff up, right? Doing the DD on this. So like a big thing that the community has talked about is back in 2005 was when Reg Show was introduced, right? So, and that tried to put a halt to the uh, rampant naked short selling that was going on. We hear from Dr. T a lot on that, right? And if you look at the correspondence there, so they introduced Reg Show, and then the financial collapse happened just a few years later. Yeah. It's like, was was this huge pile of naked shorts really something instrumental? We never heard anything about that at the time, yeah. of course, because they don't tell us anything. But what's happened since 2005, like you said, is or 2008, is this explosion of derivatives, right? You're talking about quadri quadrillions yeah. of derivatives. Or you look at the balance sheet of someone like um, Citadel or uh, what's another one that's commonly talked about? It's JP Morgan. And you just look at the number of assets sold but not yet bought, right? But another big thing that's been introduced since then is ETFs. And so how many fails to deliver are they routing through ETFs now to avoid break show? Yeah, right. exactly. Because break show doesn't really... Um, have any control over ETF. So every time that there's a new rule introduced to stop their behavior, they just come up with a new financial derivative instrument 
to keep the ball rolling and yeah. it gets bigger and more out of control. So what's the damage going to be this time? Like last time, I think the Fed bailed out the banks for like, what, eight trill? Somewhere between like five and 13 trill, right? We don't even yeah. know because when I think it was Ron Paul went and tried to figure out how much money it was, they said they couldn't tell him because it would create a run on the banks, right? Yeah. So we can't even know the extent of the bailout. So how big is the collapse going to be this time? Like, crazy. you know, they just, they just kicked it 14 years. And so here we are again. And it's clear that the market's like ebbing down slowly, right? Yeah. It's just obvious. You just watch it. And it's like, um, you know, no one likes Leary. But he said as soon as someone finally capitulates and explodes, yeah. then you'll see this thing finally recover like Lehman and Bear Stearns did 14 years ago. So who's it going to be? And we see Credit Suisse dying. So like, it's all kind of, I don't know, if it, like for super stonkers, it's obvious. And then for everyone else, they're oblivious because they're, the media is not telling them yeah. anything. That is that is crazy. And that is exactly what I think is happening. It's a slow burn into a crash that obliterates capital or collateral for these hedge funds. And then we start to see some either somebody gets sacrificed and there's no way for a bailout. We, we know that. I mean, we'd like... The, re, uh, the recent DD from uh, Peruvian Bull on Superstock was crazy about like, they just, yeah. they don't have a way out already. They literally have no way out already. So they can't just like ha add on a bailout too. <laughs> like they don't have the means to do it this time. It's not like right. everything was great. And then all of a sudden, oh, we need a bailout. It's like nothing is great anywhere right now. And the world's economy is at stake. <laughs> so, okay. Bailouts off the table. Mind, the thing blowing my mind is the central banks are posting losses now. Like, yeah, that's, that's new. <laughs> like, yeah. I always consider them to be like this, uh, like, if you think about a video game, they're like the server, right? They're the thing that, like, is always existent. Dude. Like, so how's, how's the central bank dying? <laughs> you know what is crazy is what, here's my, here's what I really think is the truth. And, and this is like the money conspiracy. If it was like, there's 9-11 conspiracy, this is the money conspiracy. It is that they couldn't print money fast enough to make things uh for what they wanted and they over like they did some bad estimations on like what a dollar ratio should be and because of that they like they, they couldn't they couldn't tell exactly what the dollar amount of anything should be and so they're like okay we can never make enough of this money so because they couldn't make enough money they said all right screw it we're never going to find enough gold or anything to back this anyway we'll just start writing notes upon notes upon notes of everything that you owe me so then these like little small, like they have it on the books if they really needed it, but there's no way to actually print that much. There's, so it started to inflate over time because it just kept printing money that isn't real. They're lending out fake money that it, it should be like, okay, the Fed's like, uh, there's no more money. We can't keep these bank loans going until they're all paid back, you know, but they're like, no, screw it. We'll, just take, we'll keep it taking applications. <laughs> we'll keep taking everybody's money and lending it out, even though we know we don't have it. And everyone did that across the board, which is crazy. It's like the way the derivatives market works and the way that like owing something, somebody works is exactly how the, the entire world has been structured. I think banks are fake and they like, they're broke. Like it, it's the biggest buildings in every city, but they're broke. It's crazy. It's like the whole thing's a house of cards. It's a, and that was one of the first, the house of cards was one of the first great DDs in uh, the GME community, you know, and it described exactly that. And if you think about like, it blew my mind because, you know, going back to where we started, I was a traditional investor, you know, you buy a mutual fund and you just sit on it for 30 years and then you're good to go in retirement. And then I'm learning about options and I'm like, wow, you got a hundred to one <laughs> leverage here. Yeah. And then you're buying, you're buying options on margin. So now you're 30xing your margin if you're a, a big bank, right? And what's crazy is if you look at what was going on with Credit Suisse and Archegos, right? They're actually under an obligation like Archegos. If they're going to go long, they have to have like an equivalent amount of short positions too. Mm -hmm. So they push them, they bully them into, yeah, we're going to lend you a billion dollars to go long. But then you got to find something to go a billion dollars short on because they have to balance out their position. Yeah. So you're just, and they're like, that's not balanced like you're not like if i'm short on this one company to an egregious degree and then long on this other one what happens if they the both positions go backwards on me right and yeah, that could right. happen it's not, like, it's not like because gamestop goes down whatever they were long on had to go up right so if both their positions blow up then they're double downing on their and it's just crazy to me like the whole the whole financial scheme is insane like it's it feels like like i love the big short when they go to vegas but it's so much worse yeah. than Vegas because yeah. you're betting money 
you don't have strong margin um, on old, like super high leverage. And then you're going in on swaps at the same time. Swaps are like infinite leverage. So I just, and that's supposed to be like something that we have to bail out as a, you know, as a common person. Like I actually go to work and I have money in my bank account. I can't buy <laughs> equities yeah. unless I put money in first. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, it's like the ultimate credit card. And it's like, the, it's, it's the ultimate, it's actually the ultimate rules for the, or rules for me or not for the, or whatever that saying is. It's like, if you have enough money and power, like you're a bank. Okay. You will get extra uh, leniencies. If you just keep borrowing, 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 you'd be like, I can't pay this back. Oh, well, you're a bank. It's like, we'll figure it out later. But if it's me or you, we go to jail. You know, it's like, there's a big difference. Yeah.